Hello, I'm Tamara Calder Richardson, and welcome to the Seeking Heaven channel. I'm your host, and I'm a six time near death experiencer as well as an international evidential medium and a Christ channeler, as well as I've channeled many other religions as well. And I want to thank you for watching my friend, Leo Bonomo, a terrific evidential medium in the UK who presented his findings in his book, The Voice of Spirit, and where he talks about the phenomenon of direct voice by uh, especially the works that he found by Leslie Flint. So I invite you to see that as a very rare phenomenon where a person's, a medium's mouth is taped, they've done tests. Uh, Leslie Flint is now passed, but and he's a British medium. Uh, he was, and they did test, but he basically can project his, there's a voice, not his, in the middle of the room. They can even, he can talk, and even the voice can still show up. I mean, it's crazy, but uh, it's it's amazing because they've done the test of the voices scientifically, and it is the people that they say that they are. And so in these recordings, they're in full. Each one is about 20 minutes, and I do have the recordings for you of Valentino, which Leslie Flint was a big fan of Valentino, by the way. He had one of the big, uh, the world's biggest collections of Valentino things. And so he came through and talked about life and about relationships and what, what matters is love and uh, the small things. And beautiful, beautiful recording and his voice and diction. And then we have another recording of Gandhi and Gandhi talking about you know, trials in life, it's really amazing, and, and what life means, and uh, what it's all about, and consciousness unity, and then we also have Confucius speaking, which he's come through to me a couple times in meditation, which is crazy, but uh, I find him to be a little bit of a smart aleck, but really wise, like he's, he's like a smart aleck, wise, tough guy though, and of course, you know, different time periods, we take on different personalities, but he has a lot of wisdom to share about life and the afterlife. And my favorite at the end is St. Thomas, I mean, not St. Thomas, St. Francis. And St. Francis talks about, oh, it's just beautiful. It took a while to get started. He doesn't, he doesn't come through much to people, but it was an important message he wanted to give. And it was beautiful. And it was about life and the afterlife and how life goes on and how the importance of life and the beauty of it. It was just stunning. So I wanted to offer you these full recordings of direct voice. Not only is the direct voice amazing, when you hear it, you can't imagine it's the same person. Uh, even the diction and the phrasing and the personality comes through in these. But you can also feel the intention and the love. And it really does uh, give a, an extended view of what we really think the afterlife is. So enjoy watching and listening, uh, rather listening to these four recordings of these famous people. And you can, you can see it right here. And also watch the first one with Leo Bonomo where he explains what this. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and enjoy these four voices of wisdom. Much love. This house was recorded on August the 23rd, 1962, meeting Leslie Flint. Hello. 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 How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm very happy to come here today. I do not know how I can express myself in words as clearly as I would wish, but I just want you to know that I am very, very grateful for everything and everyone's thoughts today and every day, and that I shall be here today, especially this evening, when you have your program. But, as I have told you before, the films as such do not interest me very much, but because they interest all of you and because you have such a fiction for them, I naturally well, I am very happy to be here, but I'm more interested in people and in perhaps being able to help some people to bring knowledge and truth and realization of the important things to all who will listen. I don't know quite how to 
say certain things to you because words in themselves are very poor things where one has so much to, to say that comes from the heart. Words cannot convey what I feel today and every day. I know that everything that you do is because of your remembrance and love. It is very difficult. It makes me feel very humble to think that so many people still remember and still have regard and affection for me and my efforts. But I realize that what is important is the far-reaching effect of my, my work and that those, at least some, were able to appreciate my desire to reach them deep down inside, not just on the surface. Always when I was on your side in my work particularly, I wanted to do things that were sincere, things that were true, things that were of life, to make people realize more well, as they could the oneness of humanity, to try if I could to make people see truth, to break down barriers between nations and people of creeds, all the things that held them apart. It is one of the great beauties of the Sarah is that we could reach everybody, no matter whether they were educated or uneducated, whether they could read or not, it made little or no difference. And it didn't matter if they, if they were in this country or that, or this religion or that. That is why my films was important to me, and this is why I wanted to play this sort of part, so that I could reach people and make them think, make them feel, and to express the deeper emotions of humanity, and to make them see the futility of war and hatred and malice and intolerance, to make them understand truth and life, and to live life more happily and more freely. That is why I suppose, in a way, my feelings still have some importance apart from the fact that I know there are those who are really concerned with just watching me as a person. But if they saw in me what I tried to express, then that makes me very happy. I think that most of them do still realize that I was something just more than, than an actor, that I was, in a sense, a vehicle of the expression not only of my own feelings and emotions, but of the feelings and emotions of others who work through me. In the old days when I used to study a part, particularly the past when I was so interested in, like Julio and Galado, I used to be so taken away with the character that I seemed to lose my own identity. I realized, of course, now that I was to control that I was helped from this side by souls in a similar nature and temperament who had the experience and they could help me. I realized in my lifetime these things, to some extent, I had a realization of, of psychic things and communication, as you know, but I did not fully understand it, and I was a little bit afraid of it. And now, it is strange how the, how the circle has turned, as it were, completely. And here today, you come together in remembrance of me, and most of you have this knowledge and this understanding. It is a great joy to me to know that, particularly the fact that I can use an instrument such as this to communicate with my friends, because all of you are my friends. I, I just want everyone who may listen to this recording to know that whoever they may be, they are my friends. Whatever their attitude of mind may be about me and my work, irrespective of independent personal opinions, they are all joined together in a band and a bond of love and affection that ties us all together. And we are all working for one end, but to help humanity. To feel that I have been responsible in this respect to if possible to link up everyone and to help makes me very happy. The fact that you come here today to talk to me possibly is the greatest pleasure of all. Although it is a great pleasure for me to know that people are coming here today to watch my films which are so old now and still have some some attraction, some interest just because I am in them possibly but to know that I can reach people, that I can make people respond to the emotions and to the development of the character and the situations and everything makes me very happy. 
Oh, Phil's pets are old now and dated. Yet it is nice to know they still hold interest. I don't want you to think I'm not interested in the fields as such, but of course, naturally, I'm more interested in human beings. I'm more interested in working for humanity, to uplift humanity, to give humanity a wider knowledge and experience of life, and how to live it, and to try if I can to create a happier and more peaceful world, not only for the present generation, but the generations to come. I realize now that my whole life is dedicated to service and in, to, in love. When on earth I was able through the medium of the film to reach many people and to give them moments of happiness to lift them out of the downrightness of their earthly lives for a little while and to make them feel different people and to give them some color and romance. All this I know and I'm grateful for and I realize it was my mission to come. But those who were those who were able to see deeper behind all that and know that in a sense I also was the medium trying to express love, trying to express the better aspect of humanity, of nature, to make people understand God's purpose in some measure. All this is very difficult to explain, but I'm very grateful for all the opportunities that were given to me, and I'm more grateful now than ever to think that there are those of you who gather together like this in my memory, and whom I have endeavored in your lives to serve others and to bring them some of the realization of truth that you have discovered through this communication. All the religions have this common ground on which they have built, and that is the life after death. We who come try to express this in terms whereby man may know fully more definitely that it is so, and to feel that I am playing some part in this, to give the conviction and the, the evidence and the comfort that comes from this great thing, this great truth, makes me very happy, very happy indeed. And this is a very happy day for me. It is a day of great, great joy, because it is not a day of sadness. I do not want it to be a day of sadness. It is a day of, of great joy to me, to think that I still have so many friends on earth who remember me with love and with kindness, and especially those who have this knowledge of truth, to work for it and to bring comfort to others. And that today, you seem to be not as dead, but fully alive, much more alive, more vital than ever I was really well on earth. I have finished my work. There's no reason for sadness that I come as so many people say before my time. It was not before my time. I came at the right time. And it is because I came at the right time that my work, and especially I refer to my spiritual work, that I tried without perhaps always realizing it to bring about through my It is great pleasure for me to come here and talk with you. I hope you can understand that which I say. Yes. Recently, you were discussing me, and you, in consequence, it gives me a very great pleasure to come and talk to you. Yes. My name is Andy. I am Gandhi. I'm sorry, I am Gandhi. Gandhi? Oh, Gandhi, you are very pleased you've come. Very pleased. I, I listen to conversation with your friends. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Con Conan Shaw. Oh, yes. They are very interested in my work, my I know. country. I know they are. I was very interested yes. in them because they have such desire to assist the people of your world to yes. greater knowledge and greater realization and understanding of God's purpose for his children. Yes. You also have a similar 
believe similar interests. Yeah. In consequence, it gives to me great happiness to be able to speak to you today on this point. I understand how anxious you are to serve God, to serve the children of the earth, to bring to them enlightenment concerning these truths which are universal. Yeah. We are conscious on this side of the great need for realization of God's will and purpose. And you are the disciples, like Mr. and Mrs. Conan Shu. You are disciples in as much that you strive to infiltrate into the minds of the people of Earth these truths which are the foundation of all religions. There are too many religions in the world which bring great confusion and often great distress to the lives of humanity. There are many barriers that have been created by man's foolishness and ignorance because of his willfulness and his desire for personal position, personal and also national pride. Until man realizes they are all of the one family, that there is only one religion, universal religion, which is truth. Man himself has created barriers in his ignorance and his desire for personal aggrandizement and because he considers that his knowledge is perfect, whereas other people's knowledge is imperfect, whereas his religion is the only true religion and other religions are false. There are only one truth that is the foundation of all religions in essence. Man has built around his various religion many falsehoods, many creeds, many dogmas, and in consequence there is between not only religions but between nations great differences of opinion, great differences in such a way that it creates unhappiness for many people. In the world there is great poverty and of times the poverty is due and not only to ignorance but also to, to personal pride, personal desire for the individual who is in the position to suppress often religion unconsciously perhaps sometimes is at the back of a great deal of the world's unhappiness. Religions become strong and groups of individuals create for themselves a great mass of wealth which is used not for the poor, not for the underfed, not for the downtrodden, but for the personal aggrandizement of a few, not only outside religion but inside it. There is great strength in religion, often there is the greatest weakness. Those religions who amass great wealth are of times far removed from the truth. I have seen this in so many different ways. When I was on your side, and since I have been here, I have seen through the hearts, into the hearts of many of these people who are in so-called high places, in high positions, and they are not concerned with the good of humanity. They are concerned with their personal pride, their personal idea of what they consider to be truth and oft times they are far from truth. It is our desire, all of we who come, that we shall in time break down these barriers that man has created in his foolishness. I am very concerned that you and others like you should be the propagators of this great revelation which is so essential to the happiness and the welfare of the world. Today, you world stand on the bridge, as it were, of destruction. Any time that bridge, which in itself is so unreliable that it is doubtful 
if it will sustain the weight that is placed upon it, because man himself unconsciously and in some ways consciously has brought into being such a condition of confusion, such a condition of hatred, of intolerance. There is so much intolerance that is placed upon the world through man's foolishness. Unless something is done very soon, I can see that the weight of man's foolishness and ignorance combined with his lack of spirituality will destroy the very bridge that enables man to reach in safety the shore of peace and happiness. We on this side for a long time have striven to build between our world and yours a bridge whereby man could climb to heights and find that peace which your world could not give. We know that it is only in this truth, only in this realization of communication between the so-called dead and the living that lies the salvation of your world. All history repeats itself. History shows the very foundation of man's happiness is in the knowledge and the realization of the life that is to come. The earth life is but the training ground. It is but the school in which man must learn the lesson which will in consequence give him the opportunity to inherit the kingdom of the living father. There is so much ignorance in your world, so few are students. Of which we are conscious. 
in as much as we are limited by the very conditions under which we have to communicate with you with all the goodwill, with all the desire that you may have within your heart to be cooperative. Nevertheless, there are limitations which are set by yourselves, by the very conditions under which you live. Mm. But nevertheless, we strive to advise you, Please. to guide and to help you. May I ask who it is speaking? I have lived on your plan of earth centuries ago in China. Oh. Mm. I have been called by several men. And I do not feel that it would be any advantage for you to know these names by which I was known for a man who was wise as you understand it for that. As soon as he passes through the gates called death, he realizes that his earthly wisdom was at not. Wisdom is purely a condition or state of being which may apply and does apply until such time as you have progressed to a further state and that which was wisdom in the past becomes ignorance in consequence of the wisdom of present. Wisdom is something which is a state of being according to one's knowledge of things appertaining at that time. But that which was true yesterday, though it has still elements of truth, is not so in the light of new knowledge. Knowledge is something which is ever changing. Man is ever experiencing new things, gaining greater understanding, greater realization, greater wisdom, and in consequence, because movement is life, because man cannot remain stationary, knowledge becomes ignorance through the light of new knowledge. Wisdom which was of yesterday is not wisdom of the day, because one has gained greater wisdom through experience. That is why when you come to us, Though you have knowledge and wisdom to a point, it is only we who come to you with a greater knowledge and a greater wisdom. We realize how difficult it is to give you, as we would wish to give you, greater illumination. We strive to overcome complication and difficulty created of times in ignorance in your world. Throughout your world, you have great teachers so-called great teachers and great leaders, full of wisdom, culled from all sources, over centuries of time, and they gather together knowledge of ancient wisdom, and they call themselves wise men, and yet their wiseness and their wisdom is as not, mm. because it is not always factual, that which once applied no longer applies. But the fundamental truths are there, nevertheless they are obscured by man in his ignorance. And the more of times he learns and knows, the more confused he becomes. We who come to you know that man will only find divine truth when he himself becomes divine, when he himself becomes spiritually attuned into the higher spheres and the greater souls who come. Of times we have heard it said at these meetings, seances as you call them, people say, ah, it is all very interesting. We communicate with this or that person and sometimes we receive illumination. But always we realize that those who go groping in the darkness of your world do not perceive as we would wish them to perceive. They do not realize as we would wish them to realize. For often many of those who profess to know, know little, because they limit the power of the spirit within themselves. Man cannot perceive light 
and he cannot achieve greatness in spiritual things until he himself is prepared to uplift himself completely above material things. You who go to these meetings, you gain here and there knowledge of kind. I do not despise this knowledge, but I say to you that until those in your world who profess to seek the things of spirit are themselves by very thought, nature, and action spiritual, the limitations are great and the difficulties are many. We cannot help as we would wish. You come. The following seance was recorded on February 18, 1963. Medium, Leslie Flint. Sitter, Rose Creed. Communicator, St. Francis of Assisi. This seance was recorded on the 18th of February, 1963. Medium, Leslie Flint. I think that's Francis again. Impossible, isn't it? It is I, Francis. Ah, yes, Francis, this is wonderful. No doubt, my child. Yes. You are wondering why it is that I come now so often to you. Yes. I am wondering, Francis, because I've been told that you don't very often come down to the earth. I seldom manifest yes. in a personal sense. For centuries of earthly time, it is true, I have manifested my love and my power to benefit mankind in any possible way that I could. But latterly, as you term your earthly time, I have been drawn more closely to the earth, because I feel that the needs of the earth are many. Possibly at this time greater is the need and in consequence, greater is my desire to serve. You may wonder why it should be that I should be particularly drawn here. Yes. And perhaps to yourself in particular. I, I would might like, if I may, to clarify this situation, yes. which has arisen. Yes, please. Because in your own mind, I have no doubt, you are somewhat, if not disturbed, puzzled. Yes. And full of the desire for explanation. Yes, please. I do not come merely to give to you my love, my power, and the healing. I come because I know that through the manifestation this instrument's powers, I may be able to reach many peoples, if not now, at some later time. I come because I know that you have such faith, such trust, and such a desire to see the power of the instrument I use, used in such a way that the work of the Spirit may be in consequence forwarded. In other words, child, though it is my natural inclination and desire to serve and to help you, through 
studios, I may reach many peoples. For by your love and your patience and your understanding, you help to create an atmosphere and condition that is conducive, not only for my return through this instrument, but conducive in such a way that I may be enabled to speak to many people. I do not have to tell you these things which in some sense must be apparent, but all we on this side of life who have progressed have progressed not only by our own efforts and our own sacrifices, not only have we progressed through all our own experiences, possibly in many lives with on earth, but we have become ennobled, we have become spiritually wise, we have become spiritually enlarged by the ministry and the efforts and the sacrifices of others. For do we not all live by one another? Do we not by sharing each other's sorrows and experiences, do we not by these things learn and by these things grow? And when we have forgotten ourselves in true service, when we have, as it were, become one with others, then truly have we started on the road of spiritual progression and have begun to find ourselves in consequence. Many years, the instrument that I now speak through has served humanity. But there is a wider field of activity and a greater urging of the spirit to unleash itself upon the world through the instrument that I now use. Of course, I am only too conscious of the fact that there will be many in your world who, having listened to these things, will not be convinced. How could it be otherwise? For those who are steeped in the material conditions of your world, who cannot perceive the truth of the Spirit, endeavouring to break through the darkness of their minds, they cannot understand nor appreciate. There will be all manner of arguments put forward as indeed through all history has man brought forth arguments against truth. And yet, in spite of it all, truth prevails. I look back on my own earthly existence, best known to humanity as Francis. I remember only too well how my own people turned against me, because for the first time I saw the glimmering of truth, and I stood fast by it, and in consequence renounced the world. And those whom I loved most dear understood the least, and so it has always been that those who shall serve truth shall suffer most. They shall lose all, possibly, that the world may seem to offer. And even in their search for greater knowledge and truth. And Please subscribe, like, and make comments, and support this channel by becoming a member. Thank you for your continued support.